Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 415. My opponent kicked off with e4, and I decided to avoid the Sicilian this time and play the center counter, the move d5. Not the most respectable or popular of openings, but uh, eh, interesting. So uh, white takes, that's the normal way to play. And then the uh, top choice here for black is to take back with the queen. Uh, since this is a short game, let's uh, let's explore this a little bit. Uh, queen takes line, I rarely play this, but uh, it's actually the main move. <laughs> and uh, Knight c3 attacking the queen is a typical way to play. And then the queen goes over to a5, setting up a potential pin along this diagonal. And, and white still wants to get a, a pawn in the center. And then uh, c6 is played. Oh, I guess not right away. c6 is an idea here just to give the queen a convenient retreat. Um, in part to give the queen a convenient retreat, I should say. Um, you don't want the queen to get stranded over here. Although I guess there are ideas of swinging over to the other side of the board too. Anyway, an interesting position. So let's let's play a few more moves of the main line. Knight f6, knight f3, and then c6. Okay, so that would be the main line. And uh, this pawn here serves to restrain the d-pawn and keeps this uh, knight in check. Um, I often play a move like bishop d2 to try and harass the queen. Um, although bishop c4, I guess, is the, the main way of continuing at this point. <clears throat> yeah, it, white has uh, an edge in these positions. He's got just uh, more space and uh, more control of the center and, and better development. But uh, anyway, it's uh, it's interesting. You get you get interesting positions for uh, for black. Let's go back to the game. Let's see. In the game, yeah, I played with knight f6. Okay, let's take a look at this in the opening book. If we back up, we were right here. Instead of taking with the queen, I like to take with the knight. If you can round up the uh, pawn with the knight, which uh, you can usually, um, <clears throat> then uh, you know it just seems a little easier for me to play than than uh, having my queen out and having it chased around. But that's a matter of taste. Lots of people play with the... We can see the most popular way to play is to take back with the queen. Anyway, if uh, the, the point about this is that if white tries to hold on to the pawn with c4, uh, then you get a good gambit here. And uh, I like to <coughs> counter with uh, c6. Now, um, what, what's, uh, what's, what are the moves here? <laughs> the one funny move here is that uh, white can just play d4, and after you take, you've actually transposed into uh, uh, the uh, Panov Botvinnik attack of the Karo Khan, which is an uh, interesting way to play. So that's something white can do. But if uh, he wants to try and hold on to the pawn, he can develop with knight c3. And uh, you take. And d4 can be played here. C takes d5, still trying to hold on to the pawn. You're going to get the pawn back. And you've inflicted some peculiar pawn structure on white here. And this turns out to be okay. I think, um, what have I seen in this position? Oh, yeah, I know what, what it is. If white wants to hold on to the pawn, he takes, which you see is not a recommended move here. Um, and then you can take back with the knight. And this is a, a good gambit for um, for black. Let's see if we go on a few moves. Say he develops a knight. You can you can put a pawn on um, e4 right away and uh, e5 right away, and he plays d3, and then you get a bishop out here. And uh, these these are the kind of ideas. You get a, a great diagonal for the bishop. You get a backwards d pawn to attack. Uh, you have ideas of the knight coming in. So in general, uh, if White tries to hold on to that pawn, it's uh, quite a good gambit for uh, for Black. So uh, I don't mind playing that way. So that's that's the idea of this. Uh, <clears throat> one of the ideas of this knight f6 move is that you're not afraid of uh, you're not afraid of white holding onto the pawn. So the most common move here is what my opponent played d4, and then you just take the pawn. So you've got your knight out. Um, you've you've gotten rid of a pair of center pawns, so you're getting an open position. And uh, I usually, as white here, I usually play with the knight f3 move. Um, but my opponent played with c4. So kind of chasing the knight around, and it looks like. Uh, I didn't go to the best square. It looks like I'd be better off. Uh -huh. Oh, the engine likes knight f6. Okay, the engine rates them about equal. The database likes knight b6, so maybe I will try that next time. Because I felt like in the game um, I played knight f6. I felt like uh, white got a lot of space here and uh, I didn't have a lot going for me. Now I could play uh, e5 immediately. That's, that's an idea I didn't really think about. <laughs> Let's see. 
turning it into a kind of a Hungarian gambit, Budapest gambit. What happens if he takes? Exchange queens. And then play knight to g4. <laughs> okay, so that's an idea for this position. Uh, interesting. So uh, I played the move e6. Let's see, c6 is a book move here. Would lead to um, similar kind of issues as I had in the game, but I guess this has the idea maybe I'm going to develop the, the this dark squared bishop on the fianchetto, and I have, I'm keeping a line open for the light squared bishop, so... That might be a reasonable way to play, too. Okay, so let's go back to the game. In the game, I played e6, and my opponent played uh, a3. So we're just out of the opening book there. Yeah, knight f3 is probably a more logical move. There's not um, any <clears throat> any need to play a3. Uh, I, I guess the idea with a3 is he's preventing this pin. But, uh, well, if he just develops a knight and allows me to pin, is this really so dangerous? He can he can play a3 now and ask the bishop where it's going. So the move a3 was not uh, not strictly necessary, but uh, that's what he played. He played a3 in this position, and I continued on with c5. Oh, you, the engine likes c5. You never sure, I'm never sure about uh, moves like that. But uh, I was already feeling a bit cramped. I need to create some space and also try and bust up this strong center. So c5 is just a logical move here. It's already supported by my bishop. I think that's probably why I played the move uh, e6 as well. It was to open up that line for the bishop and support c5. Okay, so he goes with knight, cancel that. He goes with knight f3. I take. Let's see, did he have better than knight f3? Maybe bishop f4 is a little better. Ah, these are all good moves. So knight f3 takes. And then queen takes is a way for white to maintain an edge here, which is uh, a bit surprising. After queen takes, can't I just trade queens and get an even game? Queen takes, knight takes. Well, he still has a little bit of pressure on um, c6, for example. I can't play knight c6, and he's threatening to come in here. So it forces me to waste a few tempos, but it goes into an end game or a queenless middle game, so he probably was not looking forward to playing that way. And he played uh, the very logical knight takes d4, but it's interesting that... Uh, after knight takes d4, I've equalized already. So, uh, <coughs> so anyway, the Scandinavian defense is really quite resilient, uh, in spite of uh, the evaluation of the, the chess engine throughout all that sequence. You see, I equalized pretty easily by some, some logical moves. So, it's not a bad way to play. Okay, I continued with bishop e7. Once again, uh, e5 is uh, an interesting idea here. But uh, I played bishop e7, he develops his bishop, and already um, he should worry a little bit about the placement of these pieces. They're just set up <laughs> for, the, for the old uh, pawn fork. Um, and uh, I wasn't even thinking about that during the game. I was thinking about his ideas. He can bring his pieces into... Uh, he's got you know a pretty good grip on c6. I don't want to ever play knight c6 and have it take it off and inflict this pawn damage. Well, I can't say I don't ever want to do that, but it doesn't seem like it's happening anytime soon. And um, and he has this idea after bishop f4 bringing a knight to um, <clears throat> b5 and c7, which is very annoying. So a6 I thought was forced. Um, the engine says I can play with knight bd7. Let, let's check this out too. Knight bd7. And if he goes knight to b5. Oh, e5, right. So I'm already threatening that fork that I played in the game. So he doesn't have time for uh, knight to b5. He's got a. He can move the other knight to b5. But still, I have this move e5. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. So a6, uh, I criticize my opponent's move a3 as being not necessary. This move a6 is not necessary either because I had a better way of defending against the threat. Okay, so my opponent played bishop e2. Now I uh, castled. Reasonable moves. Get out of the center. And uh, played knight bd7. And it was not uh, my first choice. I really wanted to play knight to c6. That's a more active square for the knight. But uh, again, I didn't like the idea of it just getting traded off there. So I went here um, <clears throat> without the idea of the pawn fork, just with the idea of uh, <laughs> developing a piece and trying to get it to a good square. Um, 
So he should play um, something like bishop to g3. Just drop the bishop back. And, uh, and he's got a great game here. Yeah, by not playing the most accurate moves, I've, I've given him back the advantage that he has. He still has that um, extra space. I have one more center pawn at this point, though. He has one more pawn on the queen side, and I have one more pawn in the center. So I should always be thinking about this e5 idea. Anyway, after he played bishop f3, I, I was uh, thinking for quite a while here. <laughs> Although uh, the chess engine spots it immediately. You just have the move e5 here. And uh, my opponent resigned at this point. I mean, he's, he's losing a piece for pretty much nothing. Let's see, if he drops back, actually, yeah, the engine thinks he has some some compensation. What would happen here? I mean, uh, he's just got a pawn for the piece. And, uh, and an advantage in development. But if he doesn't have an immediate attack, uh, I'm going to be able to unwind my pieces. I have some ways to develop with threats. Although... Uh, Queen b6, just threatening to trade queens, is uh, the top choice of the engine. Yeah, bishop c5 is a move, too. Okay, so it wouldn't be too hard to go on to win this. So my opponent just resigned at this point, and that's how the game ended. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, leave any comments you have in the section below. See you again soon. Bye.